Hey y'all, welcome to the GI Justin channel. Sitting outside of the mall that my store is at today. I'm seeing some really stark contrasts of where our economy and our nation is headed. So I want to do a special little pop-in episode. I normally don't record on the weekends because I kind of roll that as family time. I think you guys roll it as family time too. Shave the beard off. Tons of stuff going on. Um, so kind of want to roll right into it. So when it comes to small business and my store, we've spoken kind of at length previously about how businesses are failing because banks are not lending a whole lot of money. And banks aren't lending money across the board at reasonable numbers, making things more feasible for people to borrow money. So they've got a little cushion. So they've got a little bit of real estate to work with when it comes to what is in their bank accounts. And that is, in my opinion, directly translating over to what we're seeing in the retail spectrum. So sales across all of the other small businesses in the mall, including mine, and it's an outdoor mall in a very affluent area, um, are down. And a new food idea opened up across the street from us. They're down. Everyone other than the massive, massive retailers who can weather the storm by digging into their cash reserves are all down. And across the board, we're looking at, in my estimation, down about 30% when it comes to retail spending this spring. And being where I am, spring break is a huge portion of our entire year. And then rolling into summer, summer is a huge portion of our entire year. And with the economic shortfalls we're seeing as we grow into a recession and as we are building towards the possibility of real economic shortfalls in America, one of the first things that people do is pull back from, in my opinion, pull back from small business and roll more into big box stores, more into Walmart, more into Costco, these places where you can get things in bulk cheaper, as opposed to shopping local where, hey, our margins kind of require us a little bit because we're small business and we can't buy in the sort of bulk that big business can. Uh, we can't sell things as cheaply as they can. So what we are seeing across kind of all of the small business retailers in the mall that I've spoken to is sales down in the vicinity of 30%. And in a lot of, in a lot of industries, if you lose 30% with the margins already being what they are, you kind of find yourself in a position where it's a done deal. Uh, it's a matter of time until you're financially at a point where if you can't get money from banks, like we can't right now at decent interest rates because banks are failing and not loaning money, then we don't have the ability to weather these storms and survive these trying economic times. There's a store right next to mine um, that sells a lot of breakfast items and they've been lamenting that the number of people that are coming in is greatly decreased. Furthermore, the amount of money that people that are coming through the door are spending is decreased. And that is being seen, like I said, in my opinion, across the spectrum for small business. Um, so as part of all of this, that kind of brings the entire landscape together there are a lot of small businesses like mine in malls and retail plazas that are failing. As part of them failing, that means that these real estate developers and these commercial real estate developers that own these plazas and these malls, it's kind of a, a foregone conclusion that, hey, cool, so we have X amount of money this costs us to run this, this plaza, if we can't get new businesses and sustained businesses in here, we're gonna have to crank up rent on everybody else in order to make ends meet as the developer. So you get into this cruel cycle where small businesses can't afford to stay open, so they close. Real estate developers are seeing about 50% less occupancy in the last two years when it comes to um, the number of businesses that are in these small uh, plazas and malls. So what happens is more small businesses end up closing because they raise rent on us 
in a time when we're already seeing less people spending money and the money they're spending is also less. So it becomes this vicious cycle that I think is stifling small business and small business innovation. And what you'll see is these massive major companies are buying up all of this real estate just waiting for when we see the next bull market, the next time where everybody's happy and there's money, there will be no small businesses left because rent will be too high, the cost of goods will be too high, and there will just be nothing left for small businesses to do. We will be out of business. So I think hopefully with the economy being in the recession that we're in, typically they say a recession only lasts about 13 months, typically. And if we're in this recession and small businesses like mine and other small businesses that I'm, I'm literally looking at them right now can survive and make it through, then you're really going to see, I think, some, some small businesses who do a great job of succeeding in the future because they're capable of operating in these lean and tough times. You know, with rent skyrocketing, cost of goods through the roof, cost of transport and freight through the roof, uh, you know, with gas more expensive, and our government has been very, very slow to deal with these increased gas prices. I mean, y'all, they're watching. Was there ever a time in your mind that you would say, oh yeah, if I see gas at $2.75 a gallon to $3 a gallon, I feel like I'm getting a deal and I'm content to pay that. No, like $3 a gallon for gas when we have the ability as a nation to produce our own gas and export gasoline to other countries, why are we paying $3 a gallon? Because that's a trickle down effect as well on other small businesses like mine. Because when you're getting materials shipped to you, the transport companies are gonna kick that, that cost of freight up. So that's kind of where you end up with that. And I read an article yesterday that broke down how much money you have to make to fall into each tax bracket. And I think we're gonna see a broadening of upper and lower class and a continued shrinking of middle class. So what it said is if you make less than $75,000 a year, you are officially lower class because that's what it takes just to survive and make ends meet in the United States. And if you are considered middle class, it's up to about $200,000. And anything above $200,000 is upper class. Now I ask you guys, how many people out there, and you know, of course, don't answer me specifically, how many people do you know make less than 75,000 a year? How many teachers? How many uh, firemen make less than 75 a year? That's a big number. And the problem again is that the cost of living is just so stinking high because inflation is up. Jobless numbers are actually up because like I've said in previous uh, videos, what happens is all that reports do is report on the number of jobs created these new applications for jobs that people are filing with the IRS. What it doesn't account for is how many people are on their second or third job to make ends meet. So yes, great, 200,000 new jobs may be created. How many of these jobs that are created are people who are working a second job just to survive? Um, I know I can speak for myself when I say that my store does not do enough right now to support my family. So I have a second job. And if you consider my YouTube channel, I'm, I'm grinding away at a third job, you know? I mean, this is three things that I'm doing now. So it is one of those things. The gap, I think, between people who make a bunch of money and people who make very little is expanding. And as cost of materials and labor and goods goes up, people's ability to pay for those things becomes decreased. So the average uh, minimum wage job, we'll call it, a less than skilled job in America right now pays $15 an hour. But people are frustrated that they're having to pay more for goods, but the cost of labor is up. So it is just this massive situation where 
small business owners like myself through our economic situation are having a tough time capitalizing enough margin to stay open. And what you're, what you're seeing other than beyond that is like I've talked about in Thursday's episode, uh, the stock market, in my opinion, in some ways is being manipulated because companies, these massive hedge funds, they're worth billions of dollars like Vanguard and BlackRock and some of these other ones have the ability when the stock market isn't doing great to capitalize on off days to load up on shares of stock, sell shares of stock, manipulate the numbers to make them do what they want. So you're seeing average Americans also being crushed in their stock market losses by massive hedge funds, which is even further pushing a divide in America where haves and have nots become even greater and further apart from one another. So I think when it comes to our economy, I think really I understand what the Fed is doing in terms of increasing interest rates because they've got to get inflation under control. But with increased interest rates, everything is more expensive to buy. Cars, homes, small business loans. So you're going to see a bunch more pain before things get any better. And I think y'all are seeing that as well. You know, that from some of the discussions that I've had with you guys on the channel where Things are so expensive that to afford them, you have to go without other things. I saw a thing that said one in five American families is is currently dealing with what they call food insecurity, where you do not have enough food to meet the caloric intake for your family. In the United States in 2023, with the amount of money that we have, one in five families is having a hard time feeding their entire family. And that is terrifying and unacceptable in today's day and age. So thank you guys so much for watching the channel. Thank you for being a part of this. I truly appreciate it. Uh, Keep liking and commenting. And if you know somebody else who might like the channel, hey, copy the link right down there, send it to them because I really appreciate kind of getting the word out about what's going on in the world to the masses. So thank you guys so much and have an awesome weekend. And we'll roll back with another super exciting episode tomorrow.